So with that, we're going to go ahead and get started since it is two minutes after the official start time. We're going to jump into it today. Uh, my main goal here, guys, is to make this fun and educational at the same time. So really, I, I appreciate you guys taking the time to, you know, join us here on a live presentation. I know you got to take some time out of your day, whether it's in the evening, early morning, or late at night. Um, you know, I appreciate it very much. So I want to make sure you guys have a good time, that we don't bore you to death, that we, um, you know, give you something of value as well. So hopefully it's educational, uh, and so we're going to provide that. I will warn you that we're going to try and move relatively quickly here because we do have a lot to cover, cover a lot of great tips, and a lot of great things to share as well. So uh, before we do officially jump into it, I do want to tell you just a little bit about myself and introduce you to who I am so you know who you're listening to, uh, as well as the rest of the Niche Pursuits team. And so... Uh, Myself, Spencer Haas from nichepursuits.com. I'm sure you know who I am, but if not, I, this is a picture of me you should see on your screen now with my family on the far left. Um, you know, in 2011, I was able to quit my corporate job. I was in banking for a long time, for eight years, and luckily I discovered this thing called niche websites. I was able to build up a lot of these websites on the side. Uh, part-time and over the years it took me time I figured out how Google worked I figured out how to make money via uh, affiliate programs and I was able to quit my job uh, because I was making more money from my niche websites than I was from my day job and since then I've done a lot of things I've started uh, the software company Longtail Pro and since sold that company um, I'm currently running an FBA uh, Amazon FBA business and of course have several niche websites as well um, so that's me in a quick nutshell. I've also got Jake that's joining me uh, here on the call. I'll let him introduce himself uh, here in a second. We do have Jason Wilson that you also see there. Um, he is going to be mostly manning the uh, comments and do some question and answer, take care of any technical issues that may come up, but he definitely is part of the team. Um, so you may see him pop in for the comments as well. So Jake, go ahead and introduce yourself uh, quickly. Sure, yeah. I'm coming to you guys from Cincinnati, Ohio. I started building websites back in 2008, um, just sort of fumbling around and figured it all out and became a niche pursuits reader and uh, eventually started working with Spencer full time uh, almost three years ago now. So we do a lot of uh, FBA products on Amazon. I've started some of my own products as well um, and keep up a portfolio of websites, doing a lot of Amazon affiliate stuff, which is you know what we're going to get into tonight. Absolutely. Yep. And so uh, Jake and I are going to take it away from here. Like I said, we're going to move relatively quickly, so let's get started right away. Um, you know, first, we want to make sure we're all on um, the same expectation here that uh, we know, you guys know what to expect by joining, spending about an hour of your time with us tonight. So first, we are going to cover four proven ways to increase your Amazon affiliate earnings. That's the major goal here. So we want to share those four ways. Uh, things that you can implement right away into your own websites. These are going to be actionable tips. We're going to share live examples, so be sure to stick around for that. Uh, also, um, we're going to share with you how to create product comparison tables quickly and effectively. All right, and I, I'm going to jump more into that in a little bit, but I am going to be demonstrating uh, a new software uh, program that helps you create tables really, really fast. And this is a software product that I created. Uh, this is going to be at the end. So even um, if you're not interested in the software later, uh, we're going to provide tons and tons of really great information before that time. Uh, again, towards the end, I am going to share with you a very special, a very limited time offer that I have not offered in the past before. So this is something that if you stick around towards the end, you're going to have the opportunity to jump into a very limited time offer uh, that, again, I, I think is a ton of value that you guys are going to like a lot. So, um, and of course, we're also going to do a live question and answer to give you guys a chance to ask whatever questions you have, whether that's on something that we've talked about or just any other uh, website building topic that you might have in mind. So very quickly, the Amazon Affiliate Program Overview. I assume that many of you are already Amazon affiliates, uh, but if not, uh, just a quick 
overview is that Amazon pays you a commission when you send someone to their site that then makes a purchase of a product. All right. So of course, first you must sign up and get your affiliate link so that they can track who you're sending and that you can get credit for that sale. And the commission rates vary based on the product that you send. So toys would have a different commission rate than video games or electronics, for example. And the great thing about the Amazon Affiliate Program is that you get credit for any items that are purchased within 24 hours, not just the items that you sent them for, uh, if that makes sense. So maybe you're sending them for Nike running shoes. If they go out and buy a television, you actually get credit for that if they bought that within 24 hours. Okay. And another example, if you click on a toaster and buy a Kindle, you get paid for that too. Or, and uh, so overall, just more clicks equals more revenue. And this is just a quick screenshot to show you that. Um, the arrow points, these are all purchases from just one website. And, um, you know, most of these aren't really related to the website. As you can see, an Echo is purchased, um, a six-pack LED, and then a Sectoside uh, with plungers. These are very different products. So um, these are all things that somebody got credit for. Didn't matter what they purchased. As long as they were referred to Amazon, then Amazon does their job and makes the sale. You get credit for that. You get commissioned. So we definitely love when that happens. So... Um, one way that you can increase your Amazon affiliate earnings is to use images to increase clicks. And Jake's actually going to cover this topic uh, before we move on to the next one. Yep. So let's talk about your images a little bit. Um, and this is the first tip for the night. And the good news is, is that this is something that's very easy to implement if you're not doing this now, um, which is to make your images clickable. And not only clickable, but when you're using product image, make that link over to Amazon. Use your Amazon affiliate link. You can totally do. Um, there's been some debate about that. I actually contacted Amazon myself um, when this came up in one of our Facebook groups and uh, just confirmed that that's all above board. And you see it pretty frequently. But the question is, is do you know what people are clicking on when you visit your site. And so if you're not doing this today, what's probably happening is people are clicking on images, expecting for something to happen, and nothing's happening right now. Or maybe you're linking to just a, a bigger picture of the image on your site. You're not really doing anything with that traffic. And what the fact is, is that a lot of people, when they click on images, if you think about you, you know, if you're on Amazon or some shopping site or you're looking at products, many times people click on images and they expect to see larger images of the product or they want to see more images of the product or a product gallery or something like that. That's kind of what they're looking for. So really, it's just about giving them what they expect. And so you can use your affiliate link, send them to Amazon where they are going to have more images available typically. Um, sometimes they'll have video, they'll have images you can zoom up on. And then obviously you've got that that tracking code um, like we talked about a moment ago. So once you've sent them over to Amazon, you've really done your job because from there, if they decide to buy that product or some other product, you don't really care um, because you're going to be getting paid. And this is just a look at, uh, I just pulled this screenshot um, online of a heat map. And just to show you, this is a picture of eBay, but you can kind of see in this case where a lot of the clicks gravitate towards the images. And again, I think that if you think about your own behavior online, uh, a lot of times we do that. You know, you see the image, you click on it. Hey, I'm going to see more about that product. I'm going to click on the image. And so um, if you don't have a heat map installed, there are some free ones out there that you can if you want to kind of confirm. But it's certainly something to be thinking about. And images are a great place to start. Um, but if you, if you want to take a good look, um, install a heat map on your site and kind of see where are people clicking. You know, where should I be putting my ads and my product call outs and my images and things like that. So you can get a really good idea and find out if people are slipping through the cracks. Um, so with that, let's just, uh, Spencer's going to pull up on the screen here a couple of, of examples, good and bad, of what we're talking about. Um, the first one, I was on this uh, toaster kick here for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe it was around breakfast time or something. But uh, looking at a couple of examples of, of sites that are reviewing toasters, um, and this first one was the bad example. Now, it's not a bad-looking site at all. Um, and as you scroll down, they have nice-looking images. But once they get into their product reviews, Spencer, if you go ahead and click on that first image, or any one of the image images in their review, you can see that all it does is it brings up, if you look in the URL bar, it's basically just giving you like a zoomed up view 
of the image file on their site. And this hap this is easy to let this happen. This might be happening on your site right now and you don't even know about it. And a lot of times it's like the default option if you're on WordPress where it just brings up a larger image. Okay, but to me, if you have an affiliate site where your goal is to get people to Amazon and ultimately get them to buy stuff, um, you don't want that to happen because it's really just a dead end. I click that image, now I see a zoomed up image. I don't have any other navigation. There's nothing else I can do. I'm just looking at an image. So it's a bad experience. You know, I've got to click the back button, find out where I was and keep reading. And so let's look at the good example that we've got um, in the presentation. Again, it's a, <clears throat> it's a site that's on uh, the same kind of topic. And this is ideahacks.com. Um, if you are on the call and you own ideahacks.com, good job. Um, but this is a look at the same kind of article they're talking about good toaster ovens. And again, they've got um, the big images. They have nice buy buttons, which is great. But just focusing on the images here, Spencer, if you go ahead and click on <clears throat> any one of their toaster images, you'll see the difference. Notice now I jumped to Amazon and now I can see the rest of the pictures of the product that I'm interested in. I can hover over and zoom. And oh, by the way, They've now got their affiliate tracking on Spencer, so when he goes out tonight and buys all of his groceries on Amazon, this guy's going to get paid for it, which is pretty sweet. All right, and it's just by a simple thing of just changing where your images are going to. And so um, something very actionable, something you could go do tonight after the call, and I can almost guarantee you if you're not doing this now, you're going to see a bump in clicks and ultimately revenue from your site. So I think Spencer's going to uh, pick it up from here and talk a little bit about um, long tail keywords next. Yeah, absolutely. And if you guys are hungry, you're going to be hungry for toast by the end of this presentation because uh, <laughs> I, I apologize. We've got several more toast examples coming up. So just be ready for it. We're going to hit you hard with the toasters. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, one thing that we want to look at, uh, the second example, so, so the first way to increase your earnings is definitely implement that strategy that Jake just shared. Make sure all your images are linking with an affiliate link. The next way to increase your earnings is, well, you, you need to know what people are searching for and how are they actually finding your website. Now, I've talked about long tail keywords a lot in the past, but long tail keywords, they really do let you know what people are planning to buy. Uh, there's a lot of stages along the process where people, maybe at first they're just gathering information about a particular product, let's say toasters, uh, and then as they move, move further along, they research the various toasters out there, uh, then they start typing in long tail keywords, these longer phrases like, what is the best toaster to buy under $100, right? So now they've narrowed it down. Um, they, they move further along that buying chain. And so if you can capture that traffic sort of with these longer tail keywords right before they're ready to buy, they're more likely to click on your affiliate link and then their next decision is to just purchase. Okay. Now, uh, part of that is you only show products that fit their criteria, such as a price range, like I mentioned, perhaps under $100 or under $50 right and the great thing about long tail keywords and I could and actually have done entire presentations on long tail keywords so it's a very in-depth topic but one of the huge bonuses is that long tail keywords are also easier to rank for in Google um, a lot of times that doesn't make intuitive sense as I'll explain here because a lot of times these long tail keywords they don't have a lot of search volume associated with them but in aggregate, if you're able to target lots of these, what you might call little long tail keywords, uh, there's a ton of traffic there. And uh, they just happen to be easier to rank for in Google. So if you're not targeting these long tail keywords, you're really shooting yourself in the foot because your website could be ranking better than it is perhaps because you're charging, uh, targeting the wrong keyword. So for example, maybe you're targeting best toaster right now. And that would be great if you could rank number one, but it's a really difficult keyword to rank for. Uh, a better keyword would be best toaster under $30. Um, that's much more descriptive. They're going to be longer, um, further along in the buying process, and they know exactly what they're looking for. They don't want to spend more than 30 bucks. So if you can offer them a few options, then great. They're more likely to go buy that. Another example, best kitchen knives is a decent keyword. But a better keyword would be best kitchen knife set under $100.
And then we've got a couple more, best walking stick versus best walking stick for tall people. So it doesn't just have to be under a price range. There's lots of other modifiers that you can use. So I strongly encourage you guys to start looking at this and going more in depth with your keywords and thinking about how can I, instead of targeting these head terms like best toaster, uh, how can I target these longer tail keywords that are easier to rank for? So I want to give you guys a good example. So I'm going to do a quick Google search here for best kitchen knives under $100. So I should have had this pulled up uh, beforehand, but uh, I got it now. Google's still working, so we're in business. Uh, so there I've just done a Google search for best kitchen knives under 100 And you can see that the first result here, I'm going to click on this. This is a great example. They rank number one in Google, and uh, I don't think the website fully loaded, but that's okay. We'll get the idea here. Uh, they rank for this long tail keyword, and now I'm further along this buying process, and so, of course, I can click their affiliate link, and then I can go buy uh, that product. But I want to go a little bit more depth with that example. I just wanted to show you that this website does indeed rank number one in Google. Uh, the monthly search volume is less than 100. It only gets searched for about 50 times every month. And so you might be thinking to yourself, why in the world would you ever target a keyword that only gets searched for 50 times a month? Well, I gave you some of the reasons. One is because it's easier to rank for in Google. And two, it's much easier to convert a buyer, uh, convert a visitor into a buyer, because you know their specific phrase they're targeting. Uh, but there's more to the story. If you look at thekitchenprofessor.com, which is the website that I just pulled up, you can see that they're getting a tremendous amount of traffic. Uh, you can see here on the right-hand side, SEM Rush shows that they're getting, uh, you know, if I were to guess, 35,000 uh, organic searches, okay, getting up close to that 40,000 uh, mark. That's very, very good. And the way that they're getting so much traffic is long-tail keywords. And that's what this second screenshot is showing. This is showing all the keywords that uh, the kitchen professor is ranking for. And I just did a filter with the word under. So this is showing all of the keywords that they rank for that use the word under. So best, best knife set under 100. Um, you know, most of these keywords get searched for less than 1,000 times per month. And so because they're not afraid to target keywords like best knife set under 200 uh, and best microwave under 150 uh, that only gets searched for 40 times per month, they are ranking for lots and lots of keywords. And in aggregate, their website is huge. They're, they're getting tons of traffic. And you know I can't predict how much they're making, but I can tell you that uh, they're probably doing really well because the keywords they're targeting would con convert extremely well. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Um, you know, at the end, if you guys have more questions about long tail keywords, we can certainly address those. Uh, but that's that's been a huge um, driver of my business. If there's one thing that has helped me get traffic from Google more than anything else, it's targeting those easy to rank for long tail keywords. And so this next topic, uh, we're going to move over to Jake, and he's going to talk about, uh, yeah, kind of a unique strategy we have here as well. Yeah, thanks. And I'll just say on that last topic, uh, I would second what Spencer said. Totally agree. Um, I love those kind of keywords because you know so much more about your visitor. I mean, they're telling you, <laughs> you know, it's for this situation. It's under this amount. It's over this amount. And so you can really be targeted with the products you show them. And uh, yep, it's done really well for us. So that's a good one to implement. Um, so let's talk about putting your visitors to the test. So this is the third of four tips that we're talking about. And for anybody that joined us late, um, I haven't really been watching the chat, but just kind of a reminder, this is being recorded. So if you join late, no problem there. And if you're asking questions, and we've got Jason that's kind of monitoring the chat, but we'll have time for some Q&A at the end. So if you joined us late and missed that, just keep that in mind. But putting your visitors to the test, now this might sound a little strange, but We've seen this work really well. Um, let me tell you more about that. So you can use short quizzes to ask people 
what they're looking for. So what a better way to sell somebody something or get them to go buy something using your affiliate link than to ask them and have them tell you. Um, so here's some examples of things you could ask. Uh, do you prefer electric or battery powered? What's your price range? What type of material do you prefer, depending on what, you know, what kind of item that you're saying? And so how this would work is that we've all seen, um, you know, pop-up lead capture type things on websites where it's, hey, do you want to get more traffic? You know, Spencer uses them on niche pursuits. And if it's something that meets your needs, yeah, sure, give us your email address and we'll send it to you. And so we're talking about doing something very similar, just more in a quiz format um, where you can use an affiliate link at the end. So in the end, based on the simple questions that you ask, you can deliver a suggested or a recommended product based on their answers. So if they told me, well, hey, actually, I prefer battery powered and my price range is under $300. Now I know a couple of things where I can sort of help them narrow down and make a decision. And so at the end of two or three questions, I say, oh, hey, well, based on what you said, here's our recommendation. And so you can see that it's very powerful when you can deliver a customized recommendation um, because if you put yourself in their shoes, you feel like, oh, this person knows a little bit about me now. They know what I'm looking for. And so it feels very tailored um, to what I'm doing and what I'm trying to get out of it. So certainly it can boost a visitor's confidence that they're making the right choice and ultimately lead to a sale as opposed to somebody who's just window shopping. Uh, a little bonus tip here, you can also do this one of two ways. One, you can just show them right away what your recommended product is, or you can ask them to opt in before seeing the results. So, hey, we've got your perfect product match for you. Give us your email address, and we'll send it to you that way. Um, we did this with uh, Spencer Talks a lot about the home goods brand um, that he has, and, and we did this strategy there, matching people up with the perfect product, and just asked them at the end of a two or three question little survey, you know, hey, what's your email address, and we'll send you your results. And by doing that over just more of a traditional opt-in, we boosted our opt-in rate by 246%. So it was, it was crazy. You know, we saw way better results um, by doing that because people really wanted to see and they were curious uh, what the perfect pick was for them. So here's how that might look. Um, recommended tools and the screenshots you're going to see come from Thrive Leads, um, which is a tool that we use a lot. Um, they also have a quiz builder tool um, where you can do some of this as well. But, so the pop-up initially might look like this. Let's just say we have a health-related website. And so we're asking people, hey, you know, we're going to help you do your personalized training plan 12 weeks or less. What are you looking to do? You're looking to get a six-pack. You're looking to burn body fat. Maybe you're trying to get stronger. And so they're going to click on one of these results. So let's say they click on, I want to get a six-pack. So then the next thing is, great. Okay, we've got a free course for you um, to teach you how to get a six-pack fast. Enter your email address, and we're, we'll start sending you the course. So I enter my email. I click on that. And then you can have just a thank you page. All right, great. We've sent you your custom ab workout. Now check out our favorite uh, six-pack building products on Amazon. And just kind of inserted a, a little comparison chart there to show them some of the top picks, what their prices are, a little picture, something like that. It's very, very simple to do. But I've qualified my audience. I know they just told me, you know, I, I'm trying to get a six pack. Like I'm trying to get my abs right. You know, they, they want to look like me. And so um, very exciting. We want to help them do that. Hey, we've sent you your email. Oh, by the way, here's our favorite products related to that. And as you can see, um, can work very, very well by giving people a tailored result. So uh, if you're using Thrive Leads, there, there's probably, I'm sure there are other tools out there to do it. That's just the one that we built um, this in and the one that we used when we saw some success. Uh, certainly worth giving it a shot. It can work really, really well for you. Yeah, I'm not sure how we went from uh, eating toast to building six-pack abs. I'm not sure those <laughs> go After together. Toast. After you, you go work out, toast, yeah. Yeah. better work out because, uh, yeah, that's going to add up if you keep eating the toast. Um, but uh, moving on, so the fourth way that you can increase your Amazon affiliate earnings is to add visual elements to boost your clicks. Uh, this really is a huge way. Um, and I'm going to show you some good and bad examples here as well. Um, but there, there's a lot of different visual elements that you can add to your, uh, to your website. So you can add comparison charts, and we're going to talk about that uh, here in depth in a second. Uh, of course, adding buttons to visually appeal to people so they know what they're supposed to do. 
uh, content boxes that will grab people's attention that stands out from the rest of your content to either opt in or go buy an affiliate product on Amazon. Uh, all of these things, these visual elements can draw the eye where you want your visitor to go and to make the decisions and the clicks that you're hoping that they make. Okay, so uh, when you do this, you want to make sure that you have a call to action that is early and obvious. So if you're always waiting until the very end of your article to have your buy button, um, it's not going to get clicked on as much as if you were to include it in the first uh, you know, few paragraphs. And so the earlier and more often that you include that, the more likely it is to get clicked. Um, and here's, uh, this is a study done by uh, HubSpot, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it says that 55% of visitors spend less than 15 seconds on your site. And really all that that means is that you have a very limited amount of time to draw people in to either help them take action quickly or with these visual elements to sort of project that, hey, I'm a professional website. You should spend more than 15 seconds on my website. Okay, and using these visual elements also helps you avoid walls of text in your content. Uh, if any of you have seen these websites where all it is is just this huge wall of text, you know how boring that can be. So breaking it up with visual um, elements really helps a lot. Okay, so let's look at a couple of good and bad examples. Again, we're back to the uh, toaster ovens here. Um, here's a bad example. And to be honest, it's not the worst example in the world. Uh, we actually had a worse example, but uh, the website got shut down just today or something. Uh, it was quite odd. So it just tells you how bad of a website it was. It went offline. But uh, this is the website that we have. I will say that they do a good job. They've got a table of contents here. But uh, some of the things, you know, again, we come back to the images. You can't even click uh, these images at all. Um, so they're missing out on opportunities there. And then just the other visual elements outside of that table of contents, there, there isn't a lot in the first, you know, I've got to scroll down quite a bit before I really am able to get to something where, you know, they finally got this, um, you know, check price. If they were to just add, um, I would probably, instead of these images, add a short comparison table with my top picks. So maybe it is these three toaster ovens. Uh, but I would include it in a small table that has the ratings and the price all right there saying, hey, these are our three favorite toaster ovens. If you're in a hurry, make your decisions here, right? That would really boost conversions on this website. Um, so uh, we do have a better example, however, uh, that's over at the Sweet Home uh, where they talk about the best toaster oven, of course. Uh, and as you can see, they've done a good job here early and often, right? So they've got nice images that are clickable right here at the very start. Um, I'll even just point out they have a bigger font. A lot of times that can help as well, make it easier to read. Uh, but they've got, you know, these call-out boxes, right? So uh, they're directing you to where they want you to go. Uh, they've got their picks right here. Very easy. And, of course, if I click on these, I'm going to go over to Amazon, and now they're going to make a, an affiliate commission off of me. So they've got uh, buttons, they've got images, they've got these sort of uh, call-out tags. They're doing a lot of things right uh, as far as visual elements is concerned. Uh, so I just wanted to show you guys a, a good example of somebody using visual elements. Um, the one thing that they don't have is a product comparison table. And we're going to jump into that um, here in just a second. Uh, so if I were to ask you guys what you think the number one visual element is to increase earnings, what do you think that is? And if you could just uh, type in the chat box, the number one visual element that you can add to your website that you think is going to increase earnings. You know, is that a, uh, a button, a call-out box, uh, anything else, um, what do you guys think? So uh, Amy is saying an image and table and button, um, pictures, tables, buttons, David says, uh, tables, um, <laughs> pictures of toast, 
Uh, I'm not sure about that one. Only if you know you're trying to make people hungry. So I think the answer is product comparison tables that implements these images. So a lot of people, I think you got it right. You're saying images, you're saying product comparison tables. So if you can nail a product comparison table that has the images, uh, I think that is going to be the number one visual element that is going to increase earnings. And I can tell you just from my own experience that that's been true. I have a lot of affiliate websites, and by adding these product comparison tables, I've really seen an uptick in my clicks and earnings. So that's what I want to spend some time here is talking about how can tables increase earnings. Um, you know, first of all, it just makes it easy for people to find what they want. As I explained on the previous example, if at the top of their website they had just add a quick comparison table to help people find, you know, they don't want to read 3,000 words of content a lot of times. They just want to know what's the best toaster out there. Let me see it. So if you have a small comparison table near the top, it makes it really easy for them to find what they want. Uh, and then, of course, it helps people make a buying decision. So maybe they're still in that process, and they want to compare what the prices are, what the product looks like, how many star ratings it gets, or some other custom element. So maybe that's weight or length or some durability factor. Whatever the product is that you're comparing, you can put all the data and help people make a buying decision. And this is huge if you can really provide that value for people and help them uh, make a, a, um, a buying decision with some education behind that decision, they're going to thank you for that. Uh, another thing is that, uh, you know, we, people are on the Internet, they often just would prefer to skim rather than read in depth. And so if you have a product comparison table, that helps people to do that. And then just generally speaking, by having these product comparison tables, it gives people more opportunities to click and then go and buy. Uh, and then finally, uh, it is a good way to monetize not only your money articles or your, um, you know, polar articles as they're often called, but informational articles can be monetized with these product comparison tables as well. And we're going to show you an example of that, how to uh, monetize an informational article. And uh, with that is actually Jake's example. We wrote a recent blog post about this just uh, a couple of days ago. But I wanted to highlight this because it, it was a big success that Jake had very recently using product comparison tables. Yeah, what you're looking at here is um, just about the last 30 days um, as of just a few days ago. But uh, yeah, hopefully you had a chance, and I'm sure many of you saw the blog post on Niche Pursuits, which maybe is why you're here and how you found out about the webinar tool that Spencer's going to demo in just a moment. Um, basically use that for a site that's, that I've had that's been around for a while where up to this point the main thing I've done is use ads like AdSense ads to do pay-per-click and stuff like that. Uh, I had a few so-called money articles on there um, where that was sort of about a product, but a lot of the stuff was more just like question and answer, query-based type articles, you know, so I used the example um, without you know giving it away, um, you know how to get a grease stain out of a T-shirt, you know that sort of stuff where you're not really looking for a product, but it is people that have a problem of some sort. That's a lot of the content there. And so basically, what I did is I just, um, if you want to flip over to the next slide, I went ahead and just created a few tables. And so a lot of my tables, so like in that example, um, you know, stain removal, I had a lot of questions, very similar questions like that, that were in the stain removal category on my WordPress site. So I sort of grouped them together by category. So I went and made comparison tables in that case of just, you know, hey, what are the best stain removable products on Amazon? Um, pulled, you know, the best results, put them together with the live pricing and the images, went back, added those tables into, like I said, probably about 95% was just that informational Q&A type of content. And so I essentially just said, hey, and I'll show the plugin here in just a moment um, called Ad Inserter that I use for WordPress. But just to save some time, I just went and said, you know what, I've got 50 articles and they're all about getting stains out of clothes. I'm going to do this one stain removal table, set it up in about five minutes, and then just go drop it in based on the category. So every time in all 50 of these articles, let's just show this right here at the third paragraph. That, that's basically what I did. And as you saw a moment ago, um, just set up a separate 
tracking ID. If you're using Amazon affiliates, you're familiar with that, but basically you can set up a tracking ID to know for sure, hey, all of this traffic, all of these sales came from this specific thing. So I set up eight tables. I used the same tracking ID, and that was the only place I used it just to see, well, let's see how big of a, of a difference that this makes. And so um, that was the number you saw a moment ago, you know, it was um, just under 400 bucks there in, in 30 days. And Needless to say, I was pretty excited about that because <laughs> it was a pretty big bump. So, um, and yeah, I mean, it was it was quick and simple. I mean, I, I spent probably about forty five minutes on the whole thing, and it was the first time that I'd ever um, had really done it, you know. And this is a, a look at the Ad Insert plugin for WordPress. Highly recommend it um, for you know comparison tables, even just using regular AdSense ads and stuff like that. But it makes it very simple to just. Copy and paste in the code is what I did, and then down below, it's got some options which you can kind of see where you can specify, hey, show this one in this category, you know, and it's as simple as that. You kind of set it up and, and let it go, and uh, that's really what I did. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of, of magic there. Um, kind of had the traffic. It started, you know, being a little bit more front and center with product recommendations, even on informational articles where people weren't necessarily looking for a product, but you know, those products could kind of solve the problem that they were searching for. And so uh, by putting them in front of them, it's shown some really promising results. So pretty exciting stuff. So to follow up with that, why didn't you add tables to your website earlier? Why did you just do it so recently? Yeah, honestly, I think I had one table on there. And the main reason is because um, it's cumbersome and it's time consuming. And I'm a little bit lazy. <laughs> I mean, you you know, you get so much stuff going on, and I think you guys can relate to this. You know, there's, you know, building tables and all this isn't necessarily what you want to do, but it's not the only thing you're doing. You're doing link building. You're doing keyword research. A lot of you guys are writing your own content. And, oh, yeah, you have, like, families and jobs and stuff like that. And so when you sit down at 930 at night, the last thing you want to do is fumble around with a, a plug-in or try to do some kind of custom coding yourself and get everything to look just right. So, you know, it was like, well... I don't even know if it's going to work, and the level of effort was so high to say, well, if I'm not even sure people are going to click on this, do I really want to spend countless hours, at, you know, burning the midnight oil for something I have no idea if it's going to work? And so I just wasn't willing to make that sacrifice until I had something where, you know, hey, well, I could spend an hour, you know, and have it across 250 pages of content. Okay, that's a pretty good trade-off because then if it doesn't work, it's like, well, I lost an hour. I didn't lose a month, you know. Right. Yeah, exactly, because, you know, some of the options before, like you said, it really can be time-consuming to cr create a product comparison table that, that looks good and is effective. Um, I'm going to share a couple of ways that you guys can go out tonight on your own if you want and create product comparison tables. Uh, the first example here is using TablePress. Um, it's a WordPress plugin that I've used in the past on a lot of my websites. I've even got a full-length tutorial on pursuits.com showing how to use this. So this is what I've used in the past. Um, you know, there, there are some good things about it. Um, you know, first of all, it is free. So you can go download it for free, and you can start making tables. Like, this is an example of a survival knife uh, product comparison table that you're looking at. Um, the other thing is that uh, Table Press is customizable. You can add any data that you want to the column. Um, it's just that it's manual. So those are some of the cons here is that uh, one, it's not visually appealing. When you look at it, you know, it's basically an Excel spreadsheet with a uh, blue header, right? And uh, so it, it really doesn't look that great, to be honest. Um, it easily would take over an hour to create one table. This table that you're looking at, um, it just so happened that when it started, I believe I had 50 knives on there. Um, I don't know how many hours it took me, but it was a lot of hours. Um, but a smaller table, you know, with maybe 10 products, easily, easily over an hour, probably a couple hours, depending on how much data. Uh, if you have as much data as I'm showing in this chart, easily a couple hours to make one chart. Uh, the other thing is that it's not Amazon compliant. Um, you know, the images uh, that I'm using here, uh, they are from Amazon, but it's not using their Amazon API. And same with the prices. The price, if you display, if you display inaccurate prices, that's against Amazon's terms of service. 
Uh, the other thing is it's not mobile responsive, right? So if somebody is on a mobile phone or an iPad, uh, the chart doesn't automatically adjust its size. They'll have to scroll left and right to, to be able to see that, which does reduce clicks. Okay, so table press free, but it does have some cons there. Um, oh, and just to give you guys an idea of how much work is involved to create a table press table, um, this screenshot doesn't do it total justice, but it gives you an idea. Um, just to get the links uh, in the far left-hand column, uh, you either have to scroll over to Amazon, generate a unique affiliate link, paste it in there, and then you have to go and download the image from the Amazon website, save it to your computer, go into WordPress, upload it to your uh, WordPress, and then uh, create a custom URL to link to that image. And that's all just for one box, right? Uh, then you've got to repeat that process for the 10 or 20 knives or products that you're going to do. And then that's just one column. You've got five or six columns. Anyways, it's a really, really tedious process. I don't want to bore you with a demonstration of how that works, but I do want to bring it up because if you're just looking for a free option, you can go and do that on your own. It just takes a lot of time. Another example that, that's popular with WordPress is Thrive Tables. You can use Thrive Architect, which is their new content builder. All right. Uh, that can produce tables that look like this. They're a little more visually appealing because you can go in there and create templates. So they have some visual elements like the star ratings or buttons that makes it uh, look a little bit better. Uh, you do have to kind of custom build these visual elements or these um, templates, I should say, um, that you can use. So th that is a good thing. It is customizable in the fact that, again, you can create any number of columns that you want. You can put any data that you want in those columns. So that's a good thing. Some of the cons about Thrive is that uh, you still have to manually import all the Amazon data, right? So if you want to import the uh, product titles or the prices or the images, any of that's manual, right? You still have to go and download that yourself. Um, and again, because of that, it's not Amazon compliant. So if you're putting images and prices in your product comparison tables and you're not using the Amazon API, um, that is against their terms of service. And so if you're doing that in your Thrive tables, which in this particular example, it's not. This, this example is Amazon compliant. Um, but if you're using images or prices in your Thrive uh, tables, um, it would not be Amazon compliant. And also, it's not mobile responsive. Right, it's just not uh, built that way. And then finally, it only works on Thrive, right? So if you have a web work, uh, a website that is not using Thrive, you can't, you know, export it from Thrive and import it somewhere else or do crazy things like that. It is a paid tool. You have to you have to own Thrive themes or you have to own Thrive Architect in order to build these tables. Okay. So some good things, but there's also some bad things. And overall, when I was looking at all of these options that were out there, we're going to go through these points one more time. Uh, I had been through the experience where I needed to build manually lots and lots of tables. Like Jake, I have websites that I know if I monetized a little bit better, I could be making more money. And so that's when I took a look at all the options out there. I decided, you know what? I need to create a better solution to build product comparison tables. And so tonight I want to introduce you guys to Table Labs. Uh, table Labs is a way to quickly and effectively create product comparison tables that are visually appealing, that are Amazon compliant, that automatically pulls in images, title, pulls in prices if you want from Amazon and the prices are automatically updated. And because it's all via the Amazon API, it's all within their terms of service. And so it's totally okay to display these pictures and the prices. And you don't have to worry about whether or not your affiliate account is in jeopardy. This on your screen is just, I'm scrolling through just a few examples of the tables that were created using my new software tool called Table Labs. You can do it with the images or without. You can do it with prices or without. It's all very customizable. And of course, it automatically inserts your affiliate links so you don't have to worry about that. 
uh, it does that for you automatically. And I can tell you that these t creating these tables is very, very fast. It only takes a few minutes to create a great looking, professionally designed product comparison table. All right? And again, this, uh, I go back to Jake's recent success because he used Table Labs to create his tables. That's why he was able to create eight different tables in under 45 minutes, right? And in fact, the 45 minutes may have been the total time he took to create the tables and insert them onto a website. That's correct, yeah. That includes putting them in Ad Inserter, like I had them live on the internet within 45 minutes. Yep, exactly. So uh, he was able to do it very quickly and do as an existing website, do nothing different with traffic, and boom, now he's making almost $400 per month more with a very little amount of work. And uh, my own results, I was a little bit late to the game. Jake actually started inserting these on his website before I did. I was so focused on creating the tool. Um, it's only been very recently in the last few weeks that I inserted these on a couple of my websites. This is a screenshot um, that may be not as impressive, but in the last seven days, um, I've had $50 in increased earnings, right? So my earnings haven't dropped anywhere else, but by simply inserting a couple of tables that took me a few minutes to create, and I, I um, am only displaying the uh, specific tracking IDs that I know were, were uh, Table Labs tables, um, over $50, which would be about uh, $200 per month. So not bad for just a few minutes of work uh, on some of my existing websites that had just been sitting around for a long time. Okay, so now let's jump into an actual live demonstration. Okay, I want to show you how Table Labs works. I'm going to show you the back end. I'm going to show you exactly how easy it is to create. Before, that, before I do that, and I'm going to insert it onto a live website, um, I'd like some input from you guys. What is a niche or a product that you would like me to create a table on? I feel like we've overdone it with toasters tonight, so maybe something other than toasters. So if you could just type in the chat box, either uh, a, just a general niche or a Amazon product um, or just something that you would like me to see, see me create an Amazon affiliate comparison table on, um, that would be great. So we've got uh, lots of examples, uh, baby car seat, battery, water bottles, drills, um, glasses, chainsaw, socks. Um, let's see here. Any, any of these would be great. Um, battery charger. Let, let's do that. Let's, uh, let's try battery charger. We've got a lot. Maybe we'll do a couple here. We'll, we'll see. But uh, battery charger is jumping out to me right now. So... I am going to uh, pull up Table Labs right now. This is my existing account. And before I show you what this dashboard is all about, this is a web-based platform. So you log into Table Labs, as you can see right here. And um, I don't know that we need an official timer, but I'm going to look at the clock. Let's see how long it takes me to create this table and get it live on a website. So all you do is you click Add Chart. And what that does is uh, you then click Add Products, and I am going to do a search for Battery Charger, okay? And so what this does, uh, again, this is done via the Amazon API. It's going to uh, just pull up products in Amazon, and then we'll be able to select those and be able to um, add those to our product comparison chart. And so, um, so that was able to pull up here. So as you can see, it shows the images, the title, the prices. If I wanted some more information on this, I can just expand that. And this shows everything that's in Amazon, including the customer reviews. So I can see that this rated is 4.3 stars out of five. The last rating, um, you know, I can see all the details within Amazon. So you can do your research here. So it really becomes as easy as me just clicking this plus button. So if I like this uh, battery charger, I hit that. If I like this one, I hit the plus button. And again, I can just go through here very quickly, add the products that I like. 
And if I want to show more, I just click the show more button down at the bottom and that'll pull the next page of Amazon results as well. So let's get a little bit bigger one in here as well. Okay. And of course, when you did this, I mean, you would probably do a little bit more in-depth research to make sure you gave good recommendations. But just for purpose of this demonstration, I'm just clicking on a few to show you how easy it is to create a product comparison chart. Okay, we're going to just hit done there. And my chart, honestly, is basically done um, already. The, the details are all pulled in. If I don't like the way that things are ordered here, let's say I want to move the image over to the middle and for some reason I want the price over there. I can drag and drop all these columns anywhere that I want. Uh, if I want to you know, shorten these titles, um, I can do that. So I'm going to quickly go through here and just shorten all of these titles you know, because maybe I don't want to display all of that information. Uh, I can do that as well. And then the other thing with rating, you'll notice that there's not automatically a rating pulled in. Um, it actually is against Amazon Terms of Service to display a rating. So I'm going to just quickly go through here and I'm going to look at uh, what people are saying. They're saying this is 4.3 stars, so I'm going to trust them. I'm going to give it a 4.5 stars okay, on that. And uh, then you, know, you would go through here, make sure you do all your ratings the way that you like that. Um, if I want to rearrange how these products are in the, the chart. Again, it's drag and drop. And then the other cool feature here is that um, you can have a top pick. And um, before I go into too much details, again, I wanted to show how quickly you can create a chart. So I'll come back and show you all the additional features. You can quickly just select what you want it to look like. Let's just go with um, the white and red. And then I'm going to click the preview button. That's going to show me what my chart is going to look like live on my website. And then I'm going to click the embed code. I hit copy. And notice that I haven't done a single amount of coding yet. Um, I'm going to actually install this onto Niche Pursuits. So if I'm going to install this onto a WordPress website, I just come into the back end of WordPress. I click on the text tab. And then I just paste in the code wherever I want that. Okay, so let's say I want it right there. I hit update. And then I can just come over to uh, the actual website here. And you can see live on the website now, I've got that product comparison chart. So with all of my explaining, it took me about four minutes. Um, you know, I probably could have done that in half the time, of course, right? So. Within three to four minutes, you can have a great looking product comparison table. It's automatically got my affiliate link inserted in here um, that uh, you can see in case anybody is curious. Um, I have this Niche Pursuits books uh, product ID uh, set up. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's ready to go. So let me go back over to the demo because that does show you how quickly you can create product comparison tables, right? I like it's it's literally done. But what's even cooler is that because it is web based, you can make changes really, really fast. And let's see if I can find the uh, right tab. I got so many tabs opened up here, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, where am I at? Let's there we go. So if we come back over here to Table Labs, let's say, you know what, I don't like that red. I actually want it to be white and blue. I, I, I just changed the way that it looks. Um, and let's say I don't want this product first. I now want that third. And that one's no longer my favorite. I want this one to be my favorite. I hit Done. Um, I come back over to my website. I don't have to re-export any code. I just hit refresh on my website. It's done, guys. I completely changed the look and feel. It's already there. I, I, didn't, I haven't even touched my keyboard at all. Like I haven't typed anything to change anything. No coding, no nothing. Um, I don't want the button to say buy now. That's, that's fine. Um, I can change that. So all that I need to do, and uh, again, it's me with too many windows open. Um, 
I come over here to my chart, which I forgot to name, battery charger. Um, if I do want to change the tracking ID, I can just come in here, add a new one. I can select any existing ones. Really easy to do. Let's change the way it looks one more time. Let's make it a dark blue. Let's, um, instead of buy now, let's say, um, let's go with C, no, let's go um, buy on Amazon. I type that, that automatically changes. Notice it changed every single button, right? So I'll hit done there. Then I will come back over to my chart. I'm gonna hit refresh. And now that chart, the look and feel is completely changed. The buttons now say buy now. I've got my top pick. It really, uh, it's super easy, guys. You can probably see how quickly you can go through and create lots and lots of product comparison tables really, really fast. Uh, you can do it without the images. You can do it uh, without a buy button. You can, uh, in fact, let me, let me show you that. It's another uh, really cool feature here. Um, so let's, uh, I've got my battery charger chart here. Um, let's say instead of displaying prices, I want them to go to Amazon to see the prices. Okay, I can just delete this column. All right, and I'm going to change that. And let's give you guys another uh, look and feel here. Let's go with that. Um, and so now I'm going to come over here, and it no longer will have uh, the price there. They have to click to see the price. And I've got my green theme going. Uh, the other thing that I will show here is that it is uh, mobile responsive. You can see that it's responsive. I'm going to just drag, if it will let me, the size of my screen and notice that my chart is resizing. Um, you know, as I get smaller, it's, it's resizing uh, so that all of that still fits in one screen. Okay, so now that you've seen how easy it is to create the charts, the, the other feature I want to show you is the dashboard because this is really a huge feature because even if you've created charts with Thrive or TablePress, you usually don't know how many clicks are coming from each individual chart, okay? Now, with this dashboard, you can see all of the charts you've created. Like, I've created one, um, the best survi or, sorry, survival knife chart. I can see that it's been viewed, the chart itself, 60 times, and there's been 16 clicks, which is a 26.67% click-through rate. Um, the earnings per click and earnings, that uh, is something that you need to input. So you need to uh, look into your own Amazon affiliate account, see how much you estimate each earning per click is. If you think it's a dollar, right, if you think you're earning that much, you would know that you earned 16 bucks from this one chart. But if you think it's only 50 cents, um, and you can get fairly accurate data um, within your affiliate account, you can do that. But this dashboard is huge. Um, so we can see now that I've viewed this battery charger uh, chart three times. I've clicked on it once. So if I come over here, um, I'm going to make another click. There we go. So we now know that my chart has been clicked on two times. Um, let's refresh my screen. And now you can see that the battery charger chart has been clicked on two times. There you go. So this is, it's real-time data, guys, that is showing you um, on a more granular level how your charts are performing. So you can see if they're getting lots of views and not getting a lot of clicks, you can change that up. Uh, you can start to analyze where you're really making your money from. Uh, it's not just a black box of going, hey, I created a comparison chart. I did good. Now you can know for sure how well you've actually done. Uh, so... With that, guys, it's, it's, I've given you a very quick demonstration of Table Labs. Um, and there actually are a few more things that I probably missed. Oh, one, you know what, I, I will go through because there are a few more things. But overall, here are some of the um, things that are within Table Labs that maybe I didn't cover in the demonstration. The first is that there are professional looking themes. You just select from, you don't have to stress over which color looks good. 
it's, it's ready for you. Select the theme, you're off and running. They look great on your website. The other thing is prices. As you can see in this screenshot, the prices from Amazon are automatically updated. Uh, it's, yeah, it's really as easy as that. I don't know how else to say it, but the prices overnight, if they change, you don't have to update that. It, uh, Table Labs takes care of that for you. It automatically changes the price on your website so that you're Amazon compliant. This is all done through Amazon's API, so it's, it's not like we're scraping any data or doing anything that Amazon isn't aware of. The, Amazon is providing this data, and we're going through the proper channels to get that. So prices are updated automatically. Uh, you can also highlight your top pick, as I showed previously in this screenshot. By highlighting and bolding one of the options, it draws people's eyes visually to what the best option is on that chart. And so you're probably going to get a higher click-through rate on that bolded option. And so Table Labs makes that really, really simple for you to do and to highlight that option. Okay, the other thing is the data I just showed you. Uh, it shows you how many views, how many clicks, the click-through rate. This is really valuable data that I'm really unaware of any other table creation tool that provides data quite like this. Okay, uh, the other thing is no coding. As I showed you, uh, it's copy and paste, and it literally is clicking on that copy to clipboard button and pasting, pasting it into WordPress where you want it to go. It's as easy as that. Okay, the other huge thing is that this isn't a WordPress plugin. Yes, it works perfectly on WordPress. I've tested it on lots and lots of WordPress sites along with a dozen or so beta testers. It works great on WordPress, but it also works on anything else. If you're building an HTML website from scratch or PHP or have some other custom page that isn't WordPress, these tables are going to work beautifully and just as you would expect. It's going to work on Shopify. It's going to work on Wix and Weebly and Squarespace and any other website builder that you might have uh, or where you are getting traffic to, you can now add these product comparison tables really, really easy. Okay, and then finally is that Table Labs is mobile responsive. As I showed you, the tables do adjust, um, you know, even down to your mobile phone. Uh, it's going to adjust now, if you have let's say 10 columns, that's going to be really hard to fit 10 columns into a uh, mobile phone, right? They might have to do it in landscape mode, uh, but it, it is responsive. It adjusts and it reacts to the size of the screen that is being used, whereas other table options don't. Um, you know, you, users on a mobile phone have to scroll left and right um, quite a bit. Uh, table Labs is mobile responsive. Okay, the other, another huge actually feature that I haven't mentioned uh, is if your product comparison table uh, you're doing on uh, battery chargers, if one of those becomes out of stock, if the seller on Amazon is out of stock, Table Labs will automatically remove that from your table and they will send you, and, and Table Labs will send you an automated email saying, hey, this product is out of stock, you might want to go add another product. I mean, how cool is that, right? Um, it's not a manual process. Table Labs automatically removes it for you. And why that's good is because you might be getting a ton of clicks on an option that is completely out of stock. And if you're getting a bunch of clicks on something that's out of stock, you're not converting those, those clicks into buyers, right? So you want to be sending people the products that they can buy. Table Labs takes care of that for you. It automatically removes those out of stock items, sends you a notification email that says, hey, this is out of stock. You might want to consider adding something else. Okay? So uh, it's pretty cool, I have to admit. <laughs> so having said all of that, I am opening the doors to Table Labs users for the very first time tonight here in just a minute. I have a special offer for you guys uh, because you're on the webinar, you're hanging out, uh, you're going to have the first opportunity to try out Table Labs and I want to make it um, easy for you to make that decision. So I'm not going to go through the whole process of, you know, I could charge you this many hundreds of dollars every month or, you know, I could, uh, you know, sell you this for some huge price. I'm going to just tell you, look guys, you can go try it for a dollar. 
All right, you can try it for seven days for one buck. It's a really easy commitment. Um, whether you choose a monthly or annual plan, the first seven days are a buck. So I'd encourage you guys, if this at all looks like something that would, you would use, go try it out for seven days and see if you like it. I really hope that you do, and I think you will. The other huge bonus that I've been alluding to since the beginning of the webinar and even before the webinar and emails is this. 60 days free of Niche Pursuits Insider Access. Um, if you don't know what Niche Pursuits Insider is, I'm going to jump into that in just a second. But if you today go and select an annual plan, I'm going to give you 60 days free of Niche Pursuits Insider Access. All right, That's normally $37 per month. So you can do the math there. It's a huge value. Um, but even the $37 per month uh, doesn't help you understand the true value that's packed into Niche Pursuits Insider. So I'm going to get to that in just a second. And this is a limited time offer. I'm not going to be offering this uh, forever for as long as Table Labs exists. Uh, there is going to be a countdown timer. So you need to make sure you act fast to be able to take advantage of that offer. All right, so I want to just very quickly over the next few minutes review what Niche Pursuits Insider is because I'm hoping that a lot of you become Niche Pursuits Insider members tonight when you uh, buy an annual plan to Table Labs tonight as well because you're getting both. You're getting 60 days free Niche Pursuits Insider access. Uh, essentially what Niche Pursuits Insider is is a uh, members only uh, video training area that I've put together along with Jason and Jake the other team members of Niche Pursuits that shares all of my best practices for creating niche websites, for making money via the Amazon affiliate program, and many other things which I'm about to go through here. When you join, you're going to get full access. I'm not going to limit it. You can get all of this that I'm about to show you right now, tonight. Okay? You can log in immediately and get all of these videos. There's hours and hours of videos, PDF downloads, tutorials. You're going to get it all. Uh, right away, no limitations, right? So one of these blueprints we have, uh, my math might be wrong, we have seven or eight blueprints that are in these, in there. Uh, these are tutorial videos that, uh, for example, uh, the first one is uh, the six-month niche site growth strategy. It's going to show you how in the first six months, every step you should follow to build your niche website. Uh, another one is Niche Selection 101. It's going to take you through a very detailed process of how you should select a winning niche and to target the right keywords to know that you can rank quickly in Google. There's also a link building essentials for niche websites. Uh, it's very in-depth link building uh, tutorial, uh, video tutorial as well. And I have to move through these quickly. I apologize. Uh, but there is a lot here. Uh, broken link building blueprint, an entire video blueprint and PDF downloads, along with a recommendation for tools. Uh, also in Niche Pursuits Insider, how to ethically steal your competitor's best keywords. Uh, again, another video tutorial. A couple of videos there, actually, uh, in all of these, it's probably got two or three videos or more. Um, another one is how to find a profitable product to sell on Amazon. It's a, uh, the process that I have used, to be honest, to find lots of sort of hidden ideas on Amazon. And some of these I've built to huge businesses. Um, I'll just leave it at that. I'm, I'm doing very, very well on Amazon. I use the exact strategies in this blueprint to find physical products and sell those on Amazon. Uh, I'm also going to give you guys an on-page SEO guide. That's another blueprint in the members-only area. The latest one that we just completed was the Pinterest traffic engine, showing you guys how to tap into the huge uh, traffic source that is Pinterest and how we've had success doing that. Uh, the next one that we're about to release, because these blueprints, when you become a member, we release a new blueprint every month. Uh, the one that we're going to be releasing very soon is how to build links from major online media outlets, outlets with Harrow, uh, even if you just have a niche website. This is something we've done for our niche websites, and it works very well. Uh, so you're going to get access to all of those blueprints, and we produce a new one every single month. You're also going to get access to our private Facebook group, 
where myself, Jason, and Jake, we're in there. If you have a specific question, any, uh, any day, you just type it in there, we respond. There's other members in there, uh, hundreds of members in there that are going to respond and help you out. There's no question that's too easy or too difficult to ask in the private Facebook group. It's a huge resource, and people are getting a lot of value there. Um, I've also negotiated some exclusive discounts on software tools that you'll get when you uh, become a Niche Pursuits Insider member. And then finally, twice a month, I do live trainings. Uh, so when you uh, get your 60 days free, you're going to be getting uh, four webinars essentially for free uh, because two every month. So um, all of this, guys, I know I went through that really, really fast, but I hope that you'll take me up on this special offer. I hope that you will go over to, right now, tablelabs.com, where you can see all the information you need to purchase a plan of Table Labs. Now, if you join uh, right now, uh, like I said, we are giving you a seven-day trial for just $1. So no matter what you pay for, whether it's any of the monthly plans or an annual plan, you can get started for a dollar today over at tablelabs.com. You can start creating these product comparison tables really, really fast. And honestly, within just a few minutes, you can have a few custom uh, comparison tables that you can add to your WordPress site or any other website and start making money uh, tomorrow. Um, and so go to tablelabs.com to take advantage of the offer. Of course, I would hope that you'll take me up on an annual plan because if you choose an annual plan, you will also get 60 days of Niche Pursuits Insider Access completely free. All right, so uh, as you can see on your screen, that's got the information that you need. You can just go over to tablelabs.com uh, and uh, check it out. You guys can buy it there. We've got more information um, that you can see there. So having said that, I've already gone over my hour, but I do want to stick around um, and keep answering questions that you might have. So please now go ahead in the chat box. If you've got questions about either Table Labs, the software itself, or about any of the uh, plans or the special offer, please ask away. Uh, or if you just have any questions about uh, how to increase earnings on Amazon affiliate websites, uh, just website strategies in general, uh, Jake and I are more than happy to stick around for a little while as long as you guys are active and excited. Um, we, we can answer some of those questions. But in general, I really do hope you guys will go out and go to tablelabs.com. Check out my new software product. I've uh, put a ton of time and effort into this. Uh, so this really is a culmination of months and months of development work. Um, and so I hope you like what you see. So uh, let's jump over to some of the questions. Um, Jake, I'm going to take just a breather uh, and drink of water. So if you notice any questions you want to jump into first, feel free to do that. Hey, hey guys, uh, this is Jason. I've actually got some questions written down that I've been uh, uh, documenting through the webinar. So Perfect. Jake, you want me to rattle a couple of these off? Have at it, yeah. Okay, so one of them was um, somebody had mentioned geolocation. So will it comply with Amazon's one link? Uh, man, that's almost a Spencer question. Are you done with that drink of water yet? <laughs> I believe the answer would be yes. I think the Amazon one link, which I haven't installed. I use a tool called Genius Link, which does the same thing, and I just haven't moved to the one link yet. But I know that's like a bit of JavaScript that you put where essentially when somebody clicks on a link, if they happen to be in Canada, or the United Kingdom, it'll take them to their local Amazon website, so you can still make money there, um, else right. you would lose the commission. So right. this is just like any other affiliate link uh, in Table Labs, so I would assume that that would be all just the same, right, Spencer? Yeah, so it is. It's just your standard uh, affiliate link right now, um, and that will kind of be our first update is to uh, ensure that Table Labs is working um, no matter where uh, the end user is located. So um, I will say right now it's specifically made for Amazon US, but uh, very we're, we're kind of in the early stages, and I expect very soon that we'll be through full you know testing and uh, going through to make sure that yeah the links are working globally. Um, so that is definitely we you know it's in the works to sort of implement with one link. 
Okay, great. Uh, another question was if you, when you're searching for products, can you scroll through them to find the product? Um, or uh, can you search for it using the ASIN or the product name? This came from Shatima. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you could come in here and uh, they're just wondering if you could search by product name. Name or, or ASIN, yes. Right. Um, so yeah, you can certainly do that. Uh, you can come in here and, um, you know, this isn't related, but it's something that's popping in. So if you know you want uh, the Bear Grylls knife, right? Like this is just pulling data from Amazon. So if it pulls up in Amazon search, like it'll pull up here, right? So you can type in the product name and, and yeah, that'll work just fine. Great. Um, another one we had is, is this just for Amazon products or other products? Uh, so right now it is built only for Amazon products, right? Because it pulls in all the data from Amazon. Uh, it makes it really easy to create those Amazon affiliate uh, websites. So that is our focus, is making this the best table creation software tool for Amazon affiliates, and that's who it works for right now. Uh, another question we've had, uh, thanks Spencer, another question we've had um, a few times is, what happens if you cancel your subscription? Yeah, so if you cancel your subscription, um, you know, like any type of subscription, um, you know, th that tool can't last forever on your website if you're not, uh, if you don't have an active subscription. So the charts uh, would no longer work on your website. However, all the data is still within your account. Um, so if you were to reactivate your account, you could go back in there and all of your charts would still be created um, that you could, you know, then do whatever you want with. Um, you could reinsert them into your website or whatever. So hopefully that answers um, the question there. Okay. Uh, thanks. And then another one, uh, can you select your own color scheme? Um, customize your own color scheme. Uh, so right now we have professionally designed templates in there. So the color scheme uh, is really just based on the templates that uh, you saw me selecting from right there. Um, so it's not 100% customizable right now. So you just select from the templates and you know that you've got a great looking chart. However, I will say that, again, uh, one of the first action items that uh, we're going to be doing immediately after launch is adding a bunch more templates so that if you don't want to design anything, you can select from another 10 templates that look really, really great. You just select it and you're done. Um, and then down the road, definitely, we're, we want to make it customizable um, so that you can, yeah, if you want to go crazy and, and design whatever color button you want, you can do that. But uh, right now, it's just based on the templates. Purple and pink, right? Yeah, hey, if that's what they want. <laughs> Um, awesome. Uh, is there a limit for the number of columns and can you add uh, customized columns with other details like weight or height of the product? Yeah, great question. I'm glad uh, somebody asked that because I had forgotten to uh, show that. So, uh, and again, I'd shown uh, how you could remove the price. It's just as easy as returning the price column in case anybody was curious uh, there. But yes, you just click this plus button and you can add a custom column, right? So you could add this um, weight, right? Or, or whatever is relevant, and you can type in whatever you want. You know, you can type in anything here, um, right? So you could come in, and if you're researching something specific on these battery chargers, I don't know what that might be. Um, you know, it's 15 amps, right? So maybe all of these, um, you know, I'm gonna just copy and uh, paste that here. Right, and so maybe I want to make an amp column. Yep, you can do that, and there's really no limit. You could keep adding custom columns here, right? You know, you and can it do that dynamically, right, Spencer? Like that's one of the best features is like you don't have yeah. to go back and like create new tables. It's it's oh it's, yeah, it's like in this one I wouldn't have to re-embed the code. Yep. It's already live on my website, so I added the amp column 15 amps. It's already done. Like I don't have to go back to my website. Yep. Awesome. Um, we had another question that was, Jake made uh, eight tables and added it to 225 pages. Jake, I don't know if you can just give a, like a real quick like 20 second overview of how you, how you segmented your, uh, your, your tables by categories and added them to add inserter. Yeah, so basically, if you think about the site this way, um, everything was in eight categories, so like eight silos of like very closely related ideas. So I said like um, stain removal, um, gosh, 
have other ideas like escaping me off the top of my head, but hopefully you get the idea. So maybe I had 50 articles that were all about getting stains out of clothes, and I had 20 that were all about cleaning your windows, you know, whatever. They were all in that category. So I just went and made one chart about the stain removal products and then used Ad Inserter to say, okay, Ad Inserter, here's my one code that I'm copying. I'm pasting it in and I'm telling you every post that I have that I've marked that it's about stain removal by putting it in the stain removal category, show this chart on all of those posts after the third paragraph. It's pretty much exactly what I did. So I did that times eight because I had eight just on my site. I just happen to have like eight high level categories on my site that everything kind of fit nicely into where it made sense. So I've got other sites I've been, you know, since that worked, I've kind of been going crazy because I've got other sites. Um, I've had other ones where I've done things that are more specific where that wasn't a good fit, you know, so I was creating, um, I'd have a, a buying guide that was about a very specific type of product. And so I went in and created a table specifically for that. So doing it by category isn't always going to be a fit, um, but in my case it was because I had a lot of content that was very similar. Great. Thanks, Jake. Um, another one I've seen is, is there a PayPal option, Spencer? Uh, there is no PayPal option uh, right now. Okay. Um, a technical question. This is a good one. Since the tables are updating, he, uh, Leo says he assumes that you're hosting the code on your server to pass back the data. How do you ensure you are up 100% of the time and what happens if your servers go down? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, we do all that we can to have a very robust server um, to make sure that the uptime is there, um, right? We've got a, a top of industry server that we're using to make sure that it's, you know, uh, up all the time, and we've got uh, backup procedures to make sure that uh, all of that is up. Um, if a server did go down, yeah, your your chart wouldn't display for a short period of time. Um, uh, if, if it was cached into your page, of course, it would still show, but just like anything, you know, um, it would be back up as soon as we got those servers back up. We haven't had any issues with that, so I don't expect that that would be a major issue uh, going forward anyway. So, you know, the, the same is true for, for anything, right? You know, if your website is hosted on a server um, or if you have any other uh, type of third-party tool, um, right, you usually do have to be reliant on servers, and um, so we do the best we can to be up 100% of the time. Yeah, we uh, we pay for uh, elite uh, hosting on those servers, Leo. So we make sure that we're we're using top tier hosting to make sure that uh, those servers are are covered. So you should be good there. Um, okay, uh, somebody had asked. Let's see here. So can you switch the ranking from a number to stars? Um, I assume they're just meaning um, just within the app. They just would yes. prefer to select a star. Uh, no, right now it's just numbers. Um, I, it sounds like he's asking for a feature request. Down the road, sure, we could probably add that. Yeah, cool. Um, uh, Nick asked if he could ask about the Insider Program. Nick, if you want to ask about the Insider Program, um, just shoot an email to support at nichepursuits.com. That inbox is manned, and someone will uh, will get back to you within 24 hours. Again, support at nichepursuits.com. Feel free to shoot over any questions. Um, Phil is asking, how long is this um, this special offer for the 60 days of Niche Pursuits Insider with an annual subscription purchase? Spencer, how long is that uh, that offer going to be available for? Yeah, so if they go over to tablelabs.com, they can see how long that lasts. Um, it ends uh, Tuesday evening, so we've got uh, about six days um, that, uh, yeah, they, they can take advantage of that. But once that ticker does reach zero, we're removing that offer. So um, if you're like me, I uh, tend to forget about things. So I would encourage you, if you're interested, to go do that right now um, while you have the opportunity um, to go ahead and jump in and start taking advantage of Table Labs uh, right now. And then plus, you're going to get immediate access to Niche Pursuits Insider. So you might as well uh, join that and get all of the information in the members area uh, right as well as uh, right as right at the same time. And, and I might be partially biased, but I will just tell everybody that the community there is awesome. There's not, it's like not part of any other Facebook community I've been a part of. Like I, I do help uh, manage it, but I can tell you that I've been a part of a lot of Facebook communities and it's just, it's one of the most laid back and comfortable communities that I've seen and we've, we get a lot of value there. 
Yeah, uh, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, one, uh, two more image questions for you, Spencer. One is, uh, are the images on the chart clickable? And somebody also mentioned that the images do not look like they are clear. Um, I personally have seen them. I think they're very clear. I think it may have just been the, the part of the presentation. For some reason, it didn't come clear, but they yeah, look very clear to me. Yeah, no, I'm sure it's just uh, the fact that, uh, you know, I, I'm hosting it on my website over an internet connection, right, that uh, there might be any image issues. Yeah, the, the, they're definitely clickable. Um, I just got to find where my chart is. I got too many tabs. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's a good point. I'm glad somebody asked about that because uh, any of these things are clickable, basically, right? So I can click the image. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. Notice it does open up to a new window. Click the image. I can click the title. It opens up into a new window. I can click the button, uh, and that opens up to a new window. So this is a huge, actually, feature, uh, is that they've got lots of opportunities to click. Pretty much anywhere they click on the chart, they're going to be taken over to Amazon uh, as a best practice. Uh, it makes it really easy for them to go and purchase that product. Uh, and the way that we've got it coded is these, basically all up here is one link, one affiliate link, even though there's really three in this row, it really appears as one affiliate link to Google. And so you don't have to worry about having too many affiliate links on your website. Um, even though they have all these opportunities to click, um, Google sees it really as one uh, link. So uh, yes, they can definitely click from the images uh, so that they can be using that best practice there um, to send people over to Amazon. Okay, awesome. Um, let's see, I want to make sure I'm getting all of the, the questions. Um, oh, uh, for renewal, um, somebody just asked for renewal, um, basically how much is that going to increase upon, how much is their price going to increase upon renewal? I don't know that we've, we've gotten that far for like the annual plan yet, have we? Um, yeah, I mean, I, if I'm understanding, uh, there's, there's no increase, right? What you see on the sales page is the price that it renews at, right? Yeah. That, that's it, right? So the price you see is what you pay every year. It's, a, it's an annual plan. Once you lock into that price, there's no increase. Yep, it's, that's what it is. Um, okay, Wayne is saying thanks, so I think I nailed that. Um, I will say that if, if you choose, I mean, if you do the math, if you go look at the, the page, you know, and you're looking at whether you should do the monthly or the annual, uh, I'm really trying to make the annual a no-brainer here because if you select the annual, it's 25% cheaper than paying monthly, right? So uh, not only is it 25% cheaper to select the annual plan, you also get uh, this huge bonus of Niche Pursuits Insider. So it hopefully is a no-brainer. Just uh, jump in, join an annual plan, um, you know, select the, the plan that's right for you, and uh, you're off and running. Awesome. Spencer, I got another one uh, about API. So it's actually, there's two questions. I'm just going to combine them together. So number one um, is... Uh, Anna was asking for the best resource about pulling product images using the API. Um, I think you have to be a developer for that, but I'll let you answer that. And then the next one is how, how are you controlling price changes in the charts? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I fully understand the first question. I'm not sure if she's asking a technical question, like how, you know, what does the I, API code look like? I think she's um, asking, can just somebody, anyone pull using the Amazon API? Like, you know, if you're a niche site builder, can you go out and do it on your own? Well, yeah, you'd have to have technical background to build, right. you know, a tool that could pull that in. But anyone can do it if they're using the right tool, right? So the, the whole reason that Amazon has a product advertising API is so that things like this can be built, like table less. I mean, that's yep. ex the exact reason. Um, and the, the way it works is essentially as long as you have an Amazon affiliate uh, account, um, Amazon gives you access to their API. So through Table Labs, we actually show you how to log into your Amazon account, um, get your API access. It, you know, it's already there if you're an Amazon affiliate. Very easy to do. Uh, and then, yeah, you just input your API credentials into Table Labs, and then you don't have to worry about the API ever again. Uh, I forgot the second question. Was it about images? Yeah, so it's basically, it's about uh, pricing, which is tied in oh. to the API. 
yeah, pr pricing. So how are we updating the prices? That again, it's done via the Amazon API. So when there, we check periodically for any price changes, and if there is a price change on any of the products that you have in your charts, we automatically update that. So again, it's done through the API. There's no scraping. Uh, it's all done legitimately Amazon compliant. Excellent. And uh, I think looking at the uh, the questions, I think we, um, we've we got most of them. Oh, Phil had one more. Can the subscription be used on multiple websites? The example is multiple domains, not multiple platforms. Yes, I'm glad somebody asked that. Absolutely. You can use it on any domain, as many websites as you own. Go for it, man. Have at it. You you can insert charts on, yeah, I don't care how many domains you use. Um, you, you can see that there is an overall usage limit based on the plan that you're on, but it's not based on domains. You can insert charts on as many domains as you want uh, and um, just whatever works best for you. So we do not monitor where, you know, what domain it's on or anything like that. We don't keep track of uh, domains, so that doesn't matter. Yep, and like you said, it integrates with other platforms too. So, like if you've got a Shopify store or something like that, and you want to throw it on there, you can you can absolutely do that as long as you're within your your table limit. Uh, next totally. qu next question from Nick is based on the plan: is the starter package is that the twenty new tables per month or twenty total? Uh, that is twenty total, right? So it's uh, twenty uh, total tables hosted on to Table Labs. Again, you can have that on twenty different domains or it can be all in one domain, or if you're like Jake, let's say you take one table and you paste it uh, into an ad inserter, and it uh, that one table is populated on 200 uh, blog posts, that just counts as one table, right, uh, in your subscription. So it's 20 total. Excellent. I think we've captured most of the questions that I've been uh, tracking. So, folks, if you're out there, if there, if you've got a question that I've missed or you think that we haven't addressed, uh, now would be the time. Please type it in the chat box because we're going live off the chat box. I've uh, we've gone through all the open questions that are related to the webinar and to uh, from what we've seen through the chat so far. So, please feel free to fire away. Yep, absolutely. So. Uh, I just want to thank you guys. We've still got a ton of people on here. It's been over an hour and a half, almost an hour, 35 minutes since we started. Uh, so we are going to wrap it up here. Um, but if there's no final questions, I will just remind you, uh, again, it's over at tablelabs.com. We've been putting a ton of effort over the last several months to get this out. Um, so I hope you guys will go over to tablelabs.com. Try it out for a dollar. Um, select any plan that you want there. But I would encourage you again to choose the annual plan because you will get access for 60 days to Niche Pursuits Insider for free where you can get tons of tutorial videos, tons of other information. But at the end of the day, um, the software is a huge time saver. It's one of the biggest ways that you can increase your Amazon affiliate earnings is using these product comparison tables. So I just uh, hope you guys will check it out and I appreciate you guys spending your evening with us. So. If uh, there's no other questions here, uh, if you have anything, in ad additional questions, feel free to shoot us an email. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up since it's been a while. So thanks again, guys, wherever you're listening from. I hope you have a good evening, good morning, whatever it is. Uh, just thanks a lot. Hopefully, you'll go over to tablelabs.com and check it out. We'll see you. Thanks, guys.